Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video I'm going to teach structured query language, inbuilt functions, date functions and numeric functions. Let's begin with date functions. These are some predefined functions that can be applied to any kinds of uh, dates within SQL. After every function, you can uh, pause the video and try to implement it on your own in the SQL Plus software if you have already installed it. So let's get started. This is my SQL Plus console. And earlier in the videos, I have explained how to create a database of employees in which we created a projects table. So this is the start date um, column from my projects table, which I'm showing here because I'm going to apply all the date functions on this one. So you can watch the previous two videos where we created this entire database. If you haven't created yet, please uh, do it at this point uh, so that you can practice all these queries with me uh, along with the video. So the first date function is the add months function where I'm going to pass the start date column from the projects table. And the second parameter is how many months I want to add to it. So I'm adding three months to it. So what happens is for each date in this column, three months will get added. So you can see here 14th March became 14th June. So that means uh, there was a plus three done over there. Now this thing just adds three months and displays the data. It does not actually change the data present in the projects table. The select query never changes any data. It only displays the data by modifying it slightly. So there's no change in the data at all. So you can see this is what the add months function does. The first parameter would be a date and the second parameter would be how many months you want to add to that date. You can pause the video here, implement the query, and then come back and resume the video. Now for the next function, I'm going to again show you the column from projects table. And then we can apply, you can see the dates are as they are, nothing has changed. And now we can apply the last day function, where again the first parameter is the date. And this particular function has only one parameter, so you just have to pass a date. And this is what you get as a result. So I'll quickly explain this. What this does is, if you pass 14th March, it gives you the last day of that month, which is 31st March. So when I passed 3rd February 2005, it gave me 28th February because in 2005, February had 28 days. And so the last day of the month was 28th February. So this is what the last day function uh, does. And once again, nothing in the projects table got changed as a result of this. So again, you can pause it here and try to implement it on your own and then come back to the video. Now for the next function, uh, again, I'm showing you the start date from projects. And the function that's going to be applied is the next day function. So here it requires two parameters, the date and a day of the week where I am passing Sunday from projects. 
So what this does is gives me these uh, values. So what this means is when it was 14th March 2002, then the next Sunday after that came on 17th March 2002. So that's what this uh, next day function gives you. So 3rd July 2003 and after that the next Sunday came on 6th July 2003. And you can verify this. So you, you can pass here instead of start date, you can pass any date that you like. So you could pass that and try it out and see whether you're getting it. So if you want to pass today's date, you can pass today's date and then uh, write Sunday over here. That way it's very easy for you to verify if the answer is correct or not. Once again, you can pause the video here and try to implement this on your own, in your own machine. Now for the next function, again, I'm going to show you my start date and stop date columns from projects. So these are the columns. And to apply the function, I'm going to write select and the name of the function is months between. So it is months underscore between. And I'm going to pass two columns, stop date, comma, start date from projects. And I want to avoid those null values. So I'm going to add a condition that says where stop date is not null. So what this function does is it tells you that between the stop date and the start date, how many months passed, and it gives you a very, very exact, accurate answer up to several decimal points you can see there. So the thing is that um, I explained in the previous videos that all the projects have not been completed, so they do not have a stop date yet. Only one project is having a stop date. So that project, that is why we are only getting one value here because we added this condition and you will study more about this where condition later on in the next video but for now you need to know that you can add any type of condition you want after writing the where keyword so what i have done is written a condition that says stop date is not null which means this stop date value should not be null if it is null then do not apply this uh, function so that's why i'm this function is getting applied only to one particular row that is this row where stop date is available so for that row it is giving you how many months are there between 30th november 2003 and 3rd july 2003 so it's basically subtracting this date uh, sorry it's subtracting this particular date 3rd july 2003 from 30th november 2003 and giving you how many months are there so it is 4.87 and so on now same query if we run again but this time we mention a uh, start date first and then we are mentioning stop date then you would get your answer as a negative value and the reason for this is of course um uh, you're trying to subtract a, a larger number from a smaller number so whenever you do that you get a negative value so that's why you're getting a negative difference over here again you can pause the video for some time implement it on your own or try to understand it on your own and then come back to the video and the next kinds of functions that we are going to do are numeric functions and these are very easy to use mathematical functions which are inbuilt into Oracle SQL Plus. So let's start. Once again, this is my SQL console. And in all these functions, I'm going to use a table which is called dual. And um, within SQL, there is actually nothing present in the dual table. I've never created it. 
but it's available for you if you just want to try out a function. So I'm going to make use of that. So you will see me writing queries that says select something from dual. So don't get confused. You can also use dual in your, um, in your console. You don't need to create that table. So let's start with the first function, which is the absolute function. So I'm doing select abs, and I'm passing minus 5 as a value from dual so you can see that I'm getting five as the answer so this gives me absolute value which means if I pass a negative value I would get a positive value in return and if I pass a positive value obviously I'm going to get a positive value in return so this is the absolute function you can see that uh, the dual table allows you to uh, pass your own values as opposed to passing a column like we did for all the date functions. So here I'm able to pass my own value. Um, let's move on to the next function. Uh, you can pause and try this query out and then come back and start for the next one. Now the next function is sqrt, which is square root function where I am passing 25, so you can see that I'm getting result as five. And this is very easy to understand. You can try it out, come back to the video, and resume. The next function I have is the MOD function, which is the modulo function, so it gives me the um, remainder. So if you divide 5 by 3, uh, sorry, 5 by 2, then the remainder is 1. And once again, you can try this out and pause the video and then resume. Now my next function, mathematical function, is the seal function. So I'm going to pass over here 5.6. And as a result of this, I will get 6 because sealing function is going to choose the nearest whole value without decimal point. So, and, and it selects always the higher value. So if even if you were to pass 5.3, you would have got six because it's the sealing function and it uses the seal keyword in order to operate it. Go and try it on your own and come back to the video. The next function is floor function where I'm passing 5.4. And you can see as a result, I'm getting five. So floor function always prefers to um, reduce the number to the nearest uh, lower value without decimal point. Please try it out on your own and come back to the video. The next function we're going to do is the round function. So you have to do select round and pass some value with decimal point. And then mention how many digits you want to get rounded. So I have mentioned two and that therefore it gives me 157.73 because I said to round up to two digits. Please try the query on your own and come back to the video. My next function is the power function. So select power. The first parameter will be the number base and second one will be the power. So 2 comma 14 returns to you 2 raised to sorry, 2 comma 4 returns to you 16, which is 2 raised to 4. 
please go ahead and try it on your own. Now let's do the next function. is the exp function requires only one parameter and what it does is um, if, if you have studied uh, physics you might have come across this uh, exponent called e so if you are using the exp function and you're passing some value then this gives you actually e raised to 4 so you're getting e raised to 4 which is 54.59 and if you want to know what the value of uh, E actually is, then you can go ahead and just uh, pass a parameter into EXP1. So if you pass 1, then you can get to know what the actual value of the exponent E is. So you can see here, its value is 2.718. Please check the description box uh, to get all the queries and syntax used in this video. And thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video.